Hi, have you been diagnosed with carpal tunnel syndrome or you're having pain in your wrist or elbow, forearm areas, and you're not sure what it is? In this video, I'm going to show you how we can evaluate and treat and actually make sure it's carpal tunnel syndrome. Hi, I'm Dr. Kevin Christie, your Boca Raton chiropractor, and we are certified in certain techniques to really differentiate uh, things, carpal tunnel versus common elbow pain, or even something called proner, pronator teri syndrome. And so we're gonna show you how we do that. But some of the typical symptoms of carpal tunnel syndrome are gonna be numbness, tingling, pain in your first three digits here, okay? Um, it's, a, it's a compression of the median nerve at the carpal tunnel right here. And we've all heard of that. Typically, you're gonna have a lot of night symptoms. And so some of the things we try to differentiate between, is it a disc herniation in the neck? Is it thoracic outlet syndrome up here in the shoulder? Is it pronator teri syndrome here? Or is it carpal tunnel? Or you know, is it night pain? That's typically carpal tunnel. Is it those three fingers? Typically carpal tunnel. Um, if you're having palm pain here, a lot of times that's actually pronator teri syndrome, which in it, it irritates the median nerve up here versus here. So there's all these little nuances to actually figure out if you have carpal tunnel syndrome. And unfortunately, Many doctors just give you a blanket diagnosis of carpal tunnel syndrome if you have any type of symptoms in this area. And if you type at a keyboard, or if you're pregnant, a lot of pregnant women have uh, bilateral carpal tunnel because of fluid buildup that also compresses the, the nerve. And then when you get diagnosed with just a, a blanket carpal tunnel syndrome uh, diagnosis, unfortunately, if it's not that and you end up with having carpal tunnel surgery, and it doesn't resolve it, that's something that we want to try to avoid. And in our practice, we get a lot of patients with hand, wrist, forearm, elbow symptoms. And when we do our evaluation and treatment, it's not something that needed surgery or pills. And we could actually get rid of it so you don't have to deal with this for long periods of time. And it starts to impact your work or your life. And we want to try to make sure that we can give you a proper diagnosis and treatment to get rid of this in a uh, you know, an efficient time manner. And so in this video, I'm going to show you how we evaluate, treat, and I'm going to give you some stretches you can do to try to manage this on your own. Okay, so we're going to try to differentiate carpal tunnel from some other areas of concern. And so during our history and consultation, we're asking a lot of questions that really narrow down. Could this be carpal tunnel or could this be something else? At this point, I'm feeling pretty good that it's something going along here. We would do a whole bunch of stuff with the neck if we're concerned with that, because it could be a disc herniation. It could be some impingement in the shoulder. So we would evaluate that. But I'm gonna start from the elbow down. And I had mentioned earlier the pronator teres syndrome. There's a muscle here called pronator teres. And so I'm gonna palpate through there. And sometimes when there's a nerve entrapment of the median nerve, and I'm gonna just go into pronate. This movement here is pronation. This movement is supination. And so as the name implies, pronator teres, it actually pronates the forearm. So I'm gonna go back and forth between those motions to see if I can feel any adhesions or scar tissue that could be irritating the median nerve up here. Now with true carpal tunnel, the median nerve is gonna be compressed here. And so we're gonna work our way through the muscle groups into here. I'm also gonna check the inside of the elbow. I'm gonna now have you just kind of try to pronate your arm that way for me. Good see if there's any pain that it elicits into this area. So that's trying to give me a differential diagnosis of, again, pronator teres versus carpal tunnel. We're also going to go through some orthopedic testing into here and really try to map out where the uh, symptoms are. If he's getting really these first three, kind of three and a half fingers of whether it's motor, like movement issues or sensation, that's cluing us off to a, a, a carpal tunnel diagnosis. If we're getting a lot of hand symptoms here, there's actually a branch of the nerve that goes over the carpal tunnel, and that would be infected, affected by the compression higher up here. And so if we get a lot of hand stuff, we're starting to rule out carpal tunnel. So we're really trying to map out this nerve distribution where he's having symptoms and clue in on where it's at, all right? Um, I'm then gonna go in, once we've kind of determined, okay, we've got a carpal tunnel situation going on here, uh, we're gonna do some active release technique all through the forearm flexors, which we're, you know, you'll find a lot of tightnesses through here. So we're gonna get into there again, just nice tension. 
and active release technique is actively moving. So we're going from a shortened position to a lengthen and really trying to release that. So it's a little different than massage where we're just kind of uh, rubbing the area in a massage type fashion. We're really just keeping our thumb on a certain spot and then letting the movement release the restrictions and scar tissue. So we're gonna get all the way into there. Then there's a muscle group into here card called the pronator quadratus. And we're gonna get into there as well. And so we're gonna do a lot of muscle work all through this area to try to decrease the tension in there. Um, with carpal tunnel, there is a kind of a fluid component to it. And so that can be a little tricky. So we'll do some things to try to work on that. Uh, we're gonna also do a little deep tissue laser therapy, which we'll show in a second. But we're really gonna get into there. And then I'm gonna check how the wrist is moving in different directions and if there's any type of restrictions in the carpal joints there. And there's a little bit there, so I'm just gonna do a nice little movement there and get that going. And so we're working all the way through this area, trying to release that. I'm even gonna get into here and into the hand and really, this is an active release move. We're really trying to break up scar tissue and the thenar pad right there. Just like that. So there you go. And then we're gonna conclude that with some stretches and exercises for the patient. Another treatment option we have is uh, Graston technique or instrument assisted soft tissue. And we're just gonna get a, an emollient on there just to prevent skin friction. It's not a medicated or anything. And we're gonna get in and really strip through the forearm muscles here. We gotta be careful if there's a a suspected nerve compression with carpal tunnel. I'm not gonna go in there and really beat them up, but I'm gonna to try to get these forearm muscles all the way up here a little bit looser. So this is great. Usually a, it's a good sensation. We're gonna get blood flow to the area and this is gonna help loosen up the forearms into here. And then give, having good communication with the patient, making sure it's not too painful. But I'm not going to go too aggressive into the carpal tunnel with this, but I'm gonna get into the forearm muscles. And then sometimes it, you'll feel a spot that really resonates with, into this stainless steel tool there, like right here. And I'll go in there and work on that a little bit more to clean up some of that scar tissue. With our patients with carpal tunnel, we actually have a nice little handout we give. We give these to most of our desk workers in general uh, to prevent it, but these are some great exercises you can do. We try to give our patients things they could take home with them so they can remember them. We even actually have a software with all your exercise program that goes on there, but we give these out. And so you can see we've got a nice wrist pronator stretch here. So we're gonna get a nice close up to where you can see this and, and follow this on your own. And it guides you on how to do it. And you can see the nice pictures on doing that. I mentioned before carpal tunnel needs to be differentiated between the pronator teres, but we wanna do a nice stretch for that as well. And then number two is a nice wrist flexor stretch, really easy. And then we actually wanna do a thumb flexor stretch as well. And these are three good stretches that are safe that could help you out with carpal tunnel. And in a really good exercise, we call it flossing of the nerve. And this would be for uh, the upper extremity and in particular carpal tunnel. And so what we're gonna do is just gonna place the affected hand, we're gonna go right hand here, and we're gonna bend our neck to that side, okay? And then what we're gonna do is actually bend our neck towards the right and then we're going to extend the arm and the hand, and then you're gonna look at the hand like that. And so this is actually called nerve flossing, and I'm coming back like this, good. And then slowly like that, good. And the goal of this is you're actually trying to get the nerve to floss through the sheath that it runs into and get some mobility actually of that nerve. We really wanna make sure we avoid the full nerve stretch. Like if I did it this way, that's putting a really long stretch on it and that's gonna aggravate you. So you never want this arm extended out and your head turned that way. You actually wanna turn this way. So you're not trying to stretch the nerve fully. You're just trying to get the nerve to glide. And that is something you can do a few times a day, three sets of 10, really try to get some mobility in that area and add that to the stretches we showed you on the carpal tunnel prevention card. If you'd like your wrist, hand, forearm, or elbow pain evaluated and treated on the same day, call our office at 561-997-8898 or visit us at www.healthfitchiro.com.